What's up guys? It is Sunday. It is the first day of Readorama and I'm going to start my weekly vlog and share with you my TBR. I already shared a TBR video but now I have a busy schedule because of my summer classes so I don't know what I'm going to get read. So I'm just going to talk about it and kind of talk about my absence and try not to cry about it. Um... If you follow me on Instagram or Twitter, you'll know that one of my favorite YouTubers, Corey LaBerry, passed away and he was so young and it's really, really, really been affecting me to the point where I haven't read in a week and I felt a lot better yesterday. Today, a little bit, but it's just kind of like waves. Um, it's such a weird thing because I've been through grief before but I've never been through it with someone that I've watched online and he was just an inspiration to me. I just really love his videos. I'm a really big fan of Keen and JC and this is just a really hard time for me. I'm I'm hoping that I just get over it but I'm also just going to keep remembering Corey so I definitely uh <laughs> um so I'm gonna dedicate this video to him. I'm going to just try and make my channel and live my life the best that I can because this just showed me that nothing is guaranteed and honestly so I've just straight up not been having a good time um but I am going to move forward and film this video I was really excited for it yesterday um today it's just a hard it's just a hard time um Today, today is harder because it's just been like a week since it's happened and just, it's just such a hard thing to comprehend. Um, but I don't want to start this vlog off sad, um, with me crying, but, um, I do want to just address that. I don't know what's going to happen next week if I'm even going to have any videos up. I had so much that I had already filmed. Uh, it's just been a really hard time to edit and I'm just starting my summer classes so I'm trying to get into that. So it's just really been a hard time but I'm going to show you my TBR what I'm currently reading. It's 5 o'clock and me and April are going to do the read-in so hopefully that'll make me feel a little bit better. I've been reading some today but it's just really hard after I haven't read for a week. I tried to pick up Cemetery Boys and that was just a really hard read because it's all about death and I know it is about celebrating death but it's just a really hard topic for me to read right now and it just feels like I've read so many books about grief but it's hard when you're actually experiencing it um, because everyone grieves differently but I think that I'm just going to continue this video out. Corey always made videos and he was always so happy about it. So I'm going to definitely take Corey's mindset into this vlog and into the rest of my YouTube channel. Um, and yeah, <laughs> I'm going to try just not to cry for the whole rest of this vlog. So let's get to the book. So I'm going to share my TBR if you don't know what Readorama is. It is a week-long readathon. It's starting today, Sunday to Saturday. And I'm excited because I have not read in a week and I don't know. I've been trying to read but my mind is just so distracted that it's hard. Like I got a couple, I got like a chapter in and I started reading at midnight last night. Um, and yeah, I'm just basically a hot mess. So if you don't know this round of read Rama, the theme is to read the rainbow, just to read books with the colors of the rainbow. So going in order kind of. Uh, my current read is I Kissed Alice by Anna Birch and I'm, I'm I'm like 14 pages into it and I don't know if it's like the best thing to read right now because it's about a hate to love but like I'm only 14 pages in and damn these two girls hate each other. I'm just learning that life is too precious and f life is fragile and you just shouldn't go about hating people for no reason and I just I just have like a different mindset now and I just don't I just don't like the vibes um the first page says hate is a complicated word 
Some people believe hate is wishing death on someone. Others think that it's three minutes in a dark room closet away from true love. If this is the case, I don't hate Rhodes Ingram at all. I don't hate her, but I would rather die myself than be alone with her anywhere. And I understand that that's like angst, but that just is not, a, I just am not in the mindset to be hearing that somebody would do that. Just, I, and I know it's probably just a metaphor and it's not literal, but that kind of just struck me. And then it says, but oh, it feels good to say it. I hate Rhodes Ingram. I hate Rhodes Ingram. I hate Rhodes Ingram. This is like an Alex approximately situation where these two girls talk online and they only know each other by their usernames, but they don't know that they know each other in real life. And they bond over Alice in Wonderland queer fan fiction about the Queen of Hearts and Alice. And honestly, give that to me in real life. Like I would love to have that. So I'm kind of hoping some of the fan fiction is in here because that sounds so cool. So the summary of the book is that there's this girl Eliana and that there's a girl named Rhodes and they both hate each other but they both are talking online but they don't know that they're talking online. Yeah I don't know how I'm gonna feel about this. I'm pretty sure it's a debut. The thing I wanted to point out is that I looked on Goodreads and I saw someone point out in the review that the cover got a change a little bit. The previous cover had this character right here. Her skin tone was darker. And then the review led me to a tweet by the author talking about why there was a change. And it was because she said she wanted to write a story about two white queer girls because she felt like she couldn't do a person of color justice, which I do understand and I appreciate that, but then that makes me worried that this whole book is just going to be whitewashed and no diversity whatsoever. So I'm a little scared. So there's girl hate on the first page and I understand because that's what this whole book is supposed to be about. I'm going to try not to be as critical but as I do have an arc and it is my duty to review it and read it critically, I kind of have to read it with that mindset. I kind of just want to read something like happy for once. <laughs> like I just need some some good vibes, something that'll just get my mind off things. So if that doesn't do anything for me, the next book I have is Six Angry Girls by Adrienne Kistner, who is one of my favorite authors. So really I'm going to use this for a green or orange and there's some indigo. It depends what I get to this week, but um, this I'm really excited for and I'm really hoping that this is a good read that doesn't make me very upset and angry. I just need some wholesome good vibes. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about this one. And then I have Challenger Deep, which I'm pretty sure is a sad book. So I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do about this one, but this was my pick for a book with Rama in the title and this was for Blue and there's Rama in the title and author. And then I have a graphic novel, which is One Year at Ellesmere by Faith Erin Hicks, also an arc. And this is going to go for either orange or like indigo violet. And last, this is a wholesome read that's gonna make me really happy. So if I'm just crying and just really straight up not having a good time, then I'm going to pick this one up immediately. And this is a book that I'm excited for. It is about a trans main character. This is a trans own voices book. It comes out on May 26th. So that's why it's on my TBR and I'm just getting around to it because I wanted to include it in this TBR and I wanted to vlog my experience. Um, that's it. What time is it? It is 5.52. It's almost time to get onto Instagram Live with April. I will talk to you guys more when I've gotten some reading done. I'm sorry if this vlog is not good. Like I said, my mood is just... Sometimes, sometimes I'm fine and then other times I'm like, I am... I just hate everything and I just want to cry and not do anything. But, um... <laughs> I honestly feel so much better than I did the last few days. Like I literally, the last few days have just not done anything and have really been in a mourning period. So I actually feel a lot better. I'm just sad, <laughs> honestly. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna stop talking about sad things and get on to the rest of the vlog.
This probably looks like I just filmed it after the last clip, but no, it's actually seven o'clock and me and April just finished the reading. It was so fun and I had such a good time and I'm really enjoying this now. If you're new here, I am the slowest reader ever and I only got 26 pages read, but like I've said before, my brain is just not here. Um, I'm just easily distracted right now, but I am enjoying this and I'm glad I'm enjoying it. Um, the hate to love element, like the, the reason why the girls hate each other is valid and I really enjoy that because I feel like some hate to love, it's just super dumb. Um, where she, like you hate the other person over like the stupidest thing, but this girl's is super valid. My only complaint is that it is dual perspective, but both characters just sound the same. So I'm reading and I'm like, wait, who is this again? Like, I can't remember. So I feel like just because I'm 40 pages in, I just don't really know the characters yet, but I am really enjoying both characters. Um, but the whole reason why the girls hate each other is super valid and irks me. <laughs> and if I were in her position, I would also be super angry. Overall, I really am enjoying this. Like I said, I was really hoping that we would get the actual story. So the two girls are co-writing a comic called Hearts and Spaces, which is an Alice in Wonderland queer retelling about Alice and the Queen of Hearts getting together. So the story is a fan fiction and I'm really hoping that we have like teen characters and it's not an old woman and Alice in Wonderland. I love multimedia. I love dialogue. So I am getting that and I love, I love that. I really like the art. Um, there's someone like the pages, but they also incorporated the graphic novel and I am so excited about that because I wasn't sure if they were going to include that and they did and it made me so happy. We get to see some action going on. So excited. I've read that part while we were doing the read-in and if anyone was watching my face I was just like trying not to freak out and I was just like oh this is so amazing. Um, So I am excited to get the story Um, because sometimes when it's fan fiction it's just like written there you know you just get like an excerpt but this is like a comic and it's so cool. I haven't seen any diversity yet um, but I will update you. I'm gonna keep reading because I'm really enjoying this and yeah I will come back later. Bye. What's up guys? It's Monday. It is day two of Rama. I didn't get a lot of reading done last night because I just was kind of feeling it last night. Um, I was just not having a good time, um, but I am feeling so much better today. Um, last night was just pretty rough, but today I'm feeling good. Um, aside from the fact that I have a little bit of a problem with the book. It's hard because I'm only 60 pages in, but at the same time, there's some parts that I enjoy and then some that I don't, but it's just up in the air for me right now. There's so many parts where I really enjoy it, but then there's other parts where I'm really confused and just don't like it. For instance, if you follow my channel, you'll know that one of my biggest pet peeves in books is therapy not being written right and <laughs> this is happening in here. So in the therapy session that I just read, Rhodes is still having creator's block and she's talking about it and she's saying how she's not going to get the scholarship. She's just not going to do it because there's like a capstone that she has to do and she's just not going to do it because she just doesn't have any inspiration. And instead of the therapist being kind of like helping her through it, she tells her that her mom is paying her all of this money. So instead of being like, oh, well, work on this, work on that. She's like, oh, well, you have to do this because your mom is paying me all of this money. And I feel like that would just never happen in therapy because it's just something that you just wouldn't talk about. I just want a book about a character going to therapy and it's positive, they're not forced and they just don't hate it. Posted our Instagram challenge today. It is books and nature. So definitely go over to our Instagram so you can see all of the entries and all of that stuff. I've been having a lot of fun with that and I'm excited that we decided to do an Instagram. Um, it just gives like a little bit more of 
an element to the readathon and everyone is enjoying it and I'm just so happy that everyone's having a good time like that's honestly lifting my spirits. The read-in last night was so good and I just love the people loved it and that just makes me so happy. I am taking summer classes and I'm really just taking the day off today. I did most of my homework during the week and the weekend and I just need a break today because I just had um, not a good time last night and I'm just kind of drained and I just need some self-care today. My birthday is tomorrow. I'm gonna be 26. It's weird. I don't feel like it's even my birthday because it's quarantine and I feel like just nothing is anything anymore. And getting older, I feel like your birthday just, I don't know, to me, my birthday doesn't really matter that much. Um, but I kind of want it to matter more because I'm very lucky and fortunate to be here. So, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's my, um, motivational speech for the day. Um, I'm gonna read more of this. I'm enjoying the parts where it's gay. Like, I'm just loving that part. Like, all of the graphic novel stuff is so cool and I'm enjoying that. I need to stop talking <laughs> and go and actually read my book because I don't even know what time it is. I think it's like 12, but I don't really know what what is time? What is days anymore? Who knows? My goal for today is to finish this book because it's only 290 pages and I am hosting sprints at 6 tonight. Um, I just love interacting with everyone and I'm glad that everyone is actually participating and having such a good time. The readings were so good last night and I just love all the tweets and messages of people saying that they're just having so much fun with the readathon even if it just started yesterday. Um, and everyone is jumping on board and I'm just so happy like that is honestly just bringing so much joy to my life and making me so happy that like I just love booktube and this is why and it's just really just helping me out right now. So I'm going to shut up and I'm going to read and I will see you guys later. What's up guys? It is Tuesday. It's my birthday and it is 11 o'clock at night because I have not updated at all today because I've been reading just kind of celebrating my birthday as best as I could. Um, this book is just not giving me any motivation to finish because it's just so much girl hate. Like they're calling each other bitches and they're like, oh, you're a bitch, you're a bitch. And I just hate that. And I just don't like the direction that the book it's going. I'm almost finished. Um, I'm on 235. There's 290. Um, so I'm almost finished. It just isn't working out and I'm probably just gonna skim the rest. I would give it a three star. I think that's probably what my original rating is going to be. I just don't think it's the best. Um, I think there's a lot of other books that have done this trope better, um, especially Laz and Her Monsters. I think that that's just like the god tier one and I've just read better ones. I am sad that this just is disappointing for me. Um, I'm hoping other people enjoy it. I wouldn't recommend it. I just don't think that it is the best with this trope. It doesn't have a lot of diversity. There's literally one black character and that's it. And I was afraid of whitewashing and I got it. Um, it's just not it. And there's just a lot of girl hate. Um, I just don't really like how this was executed, but I do enjoy that there's a lot of Alice in Wonderland stuff in here. Um, that's a fun element. I just personally don't think that this is it. I'm gonna go and finish it. I'll talk about my final thoughts tomorrow but I think that that's just kind of my final conclusion on this book um and I'm just probably gonna skim the rest. <laughs> Bye. What's up guys? It's Wednesday. It is day four of Rama. I ended up finishing I Kissed Alice this morning. Last night I was just not feeling it so I woke up this morning and finished it and I'm still giving it a three star. I still stand by everything I said yesterday. If you want to know more of my thoughts my full Goodreads review will be linked down below but 
essentially, I just didn't enjoy it as much as I hoped I would, and the ending was just, uh, and I just skimmed, like, the whole book. Um, so there's my thoughts on that. I, and I read that for red and green, so I already accomplished those two. And moving on to blue, I have Challenger Deep by Neil Schusterman. This also works for the challenge to read a book with Rama in the title or author. It's six o'clock right now, I have Zoom at seven, so I've really been trying to kind of read a little bit, but I've also been doing homework. I'm trying to, like, balance my homework and, like, assignments plus reading for the readathon. So I started this today. I'm only 10 pages in. I have the audiobook, but I didn't listen to too much of that. Um, this is a short book. Uh, the chapters are really short. I feel like I'm gonna fly through this. The audiobook is only eight hours, and I listened to it on 1.5 or two times speed, so halving that would be like a four-hour audiobook. The chapters are really short, as you can see right here. Um, and they go back and forth between the boy's thought process and things that are going on in his life and then in this alternate universe where he's in a ship, which I think has to do with his schizophrenic thoughts. Um, I do know that there's a form of schizophrenia that is followed in this book. Um, and it is about a 15-year-old boy named Cade, and I know that this is based off of Neil Schusterman's son and some of his experiences with mental illness, and I'm excited to read this. I've actually never read a Neil Schusterman book, and I know that this isn't, like, a happy book, but... I am just excited to read it. I've heard really good things about it, so I will talk to you guys later when I have more read, um, but I'm gonna read before my class. Bye. What's up, guys? It's Thursday. It is day five of read rama I am hoping to get Challenger Deep done today. I am not too far in. I'm only on page 83. Um, but I've been listening to the audiobook today and just getting all my homework done. I only have two assignments left, which are due tomorrow, and it's not a lot, so I'm just gonna spend tomorrow morning doing that. I'm hosting sprints tonight at six, so I'm excited to get some reading in. It's only three o'clock, so I'm going to read up until my reading sprints, and then probably read also during my reading sprints. We have two perspectives, one of Cade in his hallucinations, which is a pirate ship, and there's a parrot and a pirate and just the narration is done so well that I feel like I'm on a pirate ship. And then we move over to Cade in real life and him going through high school and some of his behaviors that are being discovered. I don't have anything to say besides I'm just really enjoying this. Um, and I've decided that for my next novel, is just going to be Stay Gold, and then I'm gonna finish out the readathon with the graphic novel. I'm planning to finish up Challenger Deep today move on to Stay Gold tomorrow and end Saturday with this graphic novel. So that's my plans for the last couple days of the readathon um, and I will talk to you guys later. Bye. What's up guys? It's Friday. It's day six of Rito Rama. This morning I finished the audiobook for Challenger Deep and this was my second book of the readathon completing the challenge to read a blue book and to read a book with Rama in the title or author. So, so far I have red, green, and blue ticked off. Um, I really enjoyed this. I gave it a five star. The audiobook was fantastic. There was just so many narrations and the whole book came to life. I feel like that was the best way for me to read this. I feel like I couldn't get the same experience reading it physically so I'm really glad that I tried the audiobook because it was fantastic and I highly recommend it if you haven't read this book. This was also on my TBR for Mental Healthathon, checking off the two challenges to learn more about and to read a YA mental health book. Our main character is 15 years old, so I am classifying it as young adult. And I just think that the author did a really good job with this. His son had schizophrenia. I really liked the conversations about mental health, and I think that the author just did a really good job informing you what schizophrenia is like through our main character, Caden. This book is also based off of Neil Schusterman's son's experiences with a form of schizophrenia. I just really enjoyed how this was done and and it was just really a fun read and I just haven't read a really good mental health book in a while and this one definitely knocked it out of the park. I really enjoyed it. Highly recommend it and that was my blue book. 
So it is currently 1130. I finished up some homework this morning and now all my homework is done for the week, kind of. I still have an assignment to write, but besides that, everything is done and I get to read for the whole day. Um, if that actually happens, then I don't just play Animal Crossing, but I am starting Stay Gold today and hopefully going to spend the whole day reading it. I am so excited. So I'm gonna get into the book. Um, I got up early at eight o'clock because I really just couldn't sleep and finished the rest of my homework. And now I get the whole day to read. And I really hope that I don't just waste the whole day playing Animal Crossing, but I'm really excited to read this. So I just wanted to give you a quick reading update. For now, here's the rest of my TBR. We've got the graphic novel, this, I'm excited. Let's get started with the day. I'm coming at you with some happy tears um, because this book is the representation that I deserve. This whole vlog is just me crying. <laughs> um, but this time I was crying happy tears because this book is amazing. I'm only 20 pages in, but it's great. And I just, just, being a minority and not having representation, it's really important for me to read books with good representation. I have a whole video on it, which I'll link up above, um, but I always talk about the good and bad representation, but this has some good representation. Um, but so far I'm really enjoying this and I've already cried <laughs> because it's just making me so happy. Um, I just don't get good representation ever. So reading it is just so nice and reassuring and just makes me want to cry um, because I'm just so happy. So I've been crying happy tears and I'm just absolutely loving this. Also, why is every queer book set in Texas? Um, because this one is and I feel like most queer books are just set in the south. <laughs> um, I don't know why but this book is and it's like an ode to the outsiders and the dedication like the author's note at the beginning was so great. He has started his own fund called the State Gold Fund and I will try and link information down below if there is any and I'm just so happy I just love having good representation, so I'm gonna keep reading. I just wanted to pop in and say, this is so great, and I hope you could hear me because there's birds that are screaming outside. It really do be raining outside. <laughs> it is pouring outside. Um, and it is the last day of Readerama. 10 a.m. Chloe is hosting sprints. I'm going to hop onto Twitter and join her. Um, and I'm going to be reading One Year at Ellesmere, my graphic novel. It's only 164 pages. So I imagine that I'll probably get it done during the sprints. And this is going for orange, indigo, and violet. And I'm excited. Um, I just flipped through and it looks like it's all in black and white. I don't know if that's an arc thing or if it's actually just all in black and white. And I don't know how I feel about that because the color looks so nice on the cover. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna get into this. I stayed up too late reading this guy. It's so good. And I just can't wait to spend the whole day reading it. It's gonna rain all day. I'm gonna read this. It's gonna be such a good time. I'm so excited. Welcome to the last day of Readerama. What's up guys? It's 6.30. I just wanted to update a little bit about my reading. I'm still reading Stay Gold, but I'm planning to finish it in a couple hours. I'm really enjoying it. It's just very validating. It's very rare that I ever see myself in a book and this one is just giving me so much validation and I'm really enjoying it. It's definitely going to be a five star. And this morning around 11.30 during the Twitter sprints, I finished One Year at Elves Mare by Faith Erin Hicks and I'm giving it a three star. Um, my biggest problem was that it was just too short and it's supposed to be a middle grade, but it didn't feel like a middle grade and it just could have been developed more. I'm kind of sad because I didn't like pumpkin heads and I really love Faith Erin Hicks. So this was just kind of a flop for me, but I do want to read it when the final copy comes out because the first 12 pages are all in color and 
and then for the rest of the book because this is an art copy it just changes to black and white and I feel like trying to read a graphic novel and review it is hard if it's all in black and white and that's not the author's choice. So I do plan to pick this up when the final copy comes out just to see if I have a different perspective but in general this is supposed to be a middle grade and it just kind of doesn't feel like it feels more young adult to me unless the characters are supposed to be mature 13 year olds I just kind of feel like nothing was going on. The premise of this book follows a girl named Juniper who is 13 and she enrolls in Ellesmere which is a boarding school and she wants to become a doctor and being at the school will help her get to college but she's only 13 so a lot of that kind of felt like underrepresented. I just kind of felt like it was more young adult rather than reading from the perspective of a 13 year old. I totally forgot that it was middle grade just because it felt like the characters were more mature. The biggest part of this book is just bullying basically. There's like a mean girl character and Juniper is being sabotaged by her and that's kind of like the only thing I can really tell you about the book. Um, but like I said I do want to pick it up when the final copy comes out just to see if it's different but I just felt like this was too I just felt like this was too short and I'm used to reading graphic novels that are over 200 pages and this one was under so I just think a couple of things lacked but that was it. I wouldn't not recommend it but I had a fun time reading it. I just kind of wish it would have been more developed and I would have gotten color um, but that's really my only critiques. So now I'm going to spend the rest of the night reading Stay Gold and I will talk to you guys later tonight to wrap up my reading. So currently what my rainbow looks like is basically every color but yellow. So Stay Gold is my yellow book and this completed the colors orange, indigo, and violet. So I'm going to read this. I will come back later tonight when I have all of my reading completed. This whole vlog I have been just crying <laughs> um, but this time it's happy tears and I don't know math but I'm pretty sure I have like under 100 pages left but this book is just really just like it just struck a chord with me um, mainly because I just have really never seen myself represented before in any media that I've just really really felt represented and honestly I think this is the first book that I've ever felt represented um just because the books that I have read that are about trans men are usually bisexual or gay and they're not straight and I feel like that's just underrepresented and I do talk about that in my video but this just feels so close to home and I've just been sitting here crying just because I'm so happy. Literally I am just so happy to have this book and I just want to start crying again because oh, it's just been so long since I like I just always say like oh I want like a ideal book that is going to represent me and this is it. Really ex I'm just really glad that I was accepted to read this for review because I just know that my review is going to be so good because I just am so happy. <laughs> I'm just so happy like please go and pre-order and buy this book right now if you want to read like good trans representation. <laughs> I'll link it down below but I'm just probably gonna see her cry because I'm just so happy like I feel like at the end of this book I'm just gonna ugly cry and just sob and all of that stuff just because this book means so much to me and I'm so happy and I know that I said with little universes that no book could top it but I don't know I don't know I just have not found anything wrong with this book I just feel too connected to it and I kind of feel like totally kind of just like walk into my life and wrote my story um this just feels too much like my life story and just giving me this similar vibes of when I read I wish you all the best and it's a little scary if you ever feel represented or you just read a book that you're like okay this is me and it's a little too much me that's kind of what I'm feeling right now 
and I've just been sitting here crying because I just am very shook and in disbelief that I actually have a book that represents me and this is why own voices books are so important because minority groups don't ever get represented well. This is the first book that I feel 100% represented um, and obviously Coffee Boy will always be one of my favorites but this one is number one until I read another one but I think that this one is just really done the job for me. I'm so glad that I'm ending the readathon with this. Um, I just wanted to come in and talk because I feel like whenever you cry at a book, you kind of need to talk about it because if you didn't document crying at a book, did you actually cry? Um, but yeah, I just wanted to talk about this for a second because I'm loving it so much and it's so amazing and this is just the representation that we deserve. I just wanted to talk about that for a second. I'm going to finish this book and I will see you guys in the next clip. Put a finger down if it's 11 o'clock and you just won Rita Rama. <laughs> yes, you heard it here first. I completed Rita Rama and I think this is the first time I ever did, I think. I don't know. Um, maybe I have in the past, but whoa, I can't believe that I actually completed four books in a week <laughs> while doing summer classes. Um, round of applause for me. <laughs> so I'm just gonna wrap up the vlog here and talk about the books that I read this week. First, I read I Kissed Alice by Anna Birch to complete the challenge to read a book with red on the cover and a book with green on the cover. And I gave this three stars. Then I read Challenger Deep and that was to read a book with Rama in the title or author and to read a blue book. And I gave this five stars. Then today I read One Year at Ellesmere by Faith Erin Hicks and this completed orange, indigo, and violet. And I said I gave this three stars, right? I gave this three stars. And just moments ago I finished my final book of the readathon, Stay Gold by Tobley McSmith. And this was to read a book with yellow on the cover and I gave this a five star. This was incredible. I'm so glad that I got to read it. It was such a fast paced book and I just talked about so much. There are trigger warnings for gender dysphoria, um, suicidal thoughts, depression, outing, and I'm pretty sure that's it. Um, there's also misgendering as well, which does happen throughout the book, but a lot of it was just very reassuring. Like this was the most reassuring and validating book that I've read in a while. This is the first book that I've ever felt represented in and I'm so glad that I stuck with this vlog and I vlogged it because I just absolutely love this. I'm going to pre-order this ASAP. It comes out on May 26th and the author already posted that he has another book coming out next year and it's called Act Out and it is about theater and it also has a trans main character and this was just the most represented I've ever felt in a book. I think this is the first book that I've ever felt represented in. This just gives me a lot of hope for the future and I really wish I would have had a book like this when I was a teenager and I'm just so glad that this was published and is going to be in the world so definitely pick it up. Per my recommendation I just love this and it just shows why we need more own voices stories. <laughs> As you could probably tell, I just love this so much. Um, and it talks so much about um, the outsiders and it is definitely an ode to Pony Boy. And I just loved this so, so much. I had such a fun week and I read so many good books despite my mood and my busy schedule and just everything that was going on in my life. And I was thinking about this earlier that the vlog started with me crying and ended with me crying. Um, so that was just the tone. Um, let me know if you participated in Rita Rama and what your favorite and least favorite book of the week was. I would love to know and follow us on Twitter and Instagram and all of the hosts if you want to participate in the next round. I just had such a fun week and I'm so glad that I finally read this book. That is it for me today. Thank you all for watching. I hope you're all having a great day and I will see you next time.